she needs true love's kiss. Yeah! Welcome, or welcome back, if you are returning, my name is Barrett, and if you are a fan of MMOs, RPGs, JRPGs, obscure video games, art, or music, then I suggest you subscribe, because that is what we do here. Also, if you don't mind throwing a like on this video, that really helps with the algorithm. Alright, so we are continuing MSQ for Final Fantasy XIV. We were going and fighting things, so I guess this will be a good test. Because we'll go and get into a fight, and that usually shows how <laughs> we're going to hold on. Oh, oh. Big old lost dragon. Oh, ether current. Do what that you look at that creepy white thing. Those. Oh. <laughs> I love when he is like this cancel. Like why? Oh, no no no. Oh, did he silence me? <laughs> no, Muhammad is in the earth. Muhammad is slowly... has slowly become one with the planet. On this one? <laughs> Muhammad is big. Like, really big. He's like just chilling in the center of the earth, so... It's really bizarre. Blue-eyed Google. Aha! Okay. I was like, where is my person? The peeps! They're just chilling. Rat row. Is that it? would be the airy. I feel Nidhogg's presence through the eye, his caustic hatred gnawing at my soul. It would seem the death of his consort has put him on guard. Mark how he wards his lair with tempestuous winds. A similar barrier once barred our entrance to the primal Garuda's domain, until we discovered the means by which it could be penetrated. Mayhap it is time we called upon Master Garland. A force of sufficient power to break through a primal's defenses may conceivably grant us access to the airy. I can offer no better solution. Pray consult this engineer friend of yours. Very well. On the condition that you swear not to lure Needhog's, Needhog from his lair in our absence. And steal all the glory for myself, you mean? Nay, I am not so selfish as that. Contact me by Link Pearl, Pearl when your preparations are complete, and we shall set forth from the Ishgard together. I suggest we rendezvous back at St. Rinette's Forum. Uh, from what I gleaned of the Holy See's decidedly ambitious airship project, it will still be in Ishgard. Of course you will. This place is so serious. Hey, there he is. Alfie. When well, last you saw Master Garland, he was advising the Ishgardians on their ailing airship, correct? In that case, he might still be at Camp Gladtop, telling that we could try the airship landing, or mayhap even the Sky Steel Manufacturing. But let us not waste time searching aimlessly. Someone in the city is sure to know where to find him. The question is, who? 
So Emmerich would seem the obvious choice, but there is no guarantee he will be able to grant us an audience at short notice. Ah, I have it. Count Edmund's youngest son prides himself on knowing all of the Holy See's juiciest rumors. Let us return to the manor and see if Lord Eminem is all about. Is about. Eminem. Ta-da! Welcome, Mr. Finch. Shall I show you inside the manor? Welcome. Here we are. Ah, oh, the hero returns. How goes the fight, old girl? Well, I trust. Hmm. In search of a Sid Garland, you say, then say no more. The taverns are full of talk in the name of... Said Silverhand Genius has cropped up more often than most. I hear he has been tasked with getting that monstrous airship, the Holy Sea, commissioned to actually fly. Twin seem the project has been plagued with mishaps from the first. In any case, Scarlet Ironworks employees are known to frequent the airship landing, and I'll wager their master does too. The airship landing? Yes, I thought as much. Come, bro, we must find Sid and trouble him for his expert opinion. I love troubling Sid. It's my favorite hobby. The maid is already fat with child. Oh dear. <laughs> Sid! Oh, I like his jacket. Everybody's got cool jackets. Well, I guess Wedge and Biggs look the same. I want a cool winter coat. Burr, Alphanor, how fare you both? Not terribly well, judging by your faces. Greetings, Master Garland. I am sure it will come as little surprise when I tell you we have need of a favor. <laughs> Another wind barrier? And you say it was conjured by Needhog? Hmm. The Endermise could certainly take you where you need to go, but she would not fare well against dragons. She's agile for a ship her size. But not that agile. The Dravidians would fly rings around her. And if they took it into their heads to incinerate the ringing, there would be precious little we could do to avoid them. But there must be something we can do. Some manner of weapon we could employ. Istidian stands vigil at the edge of the turning mist, but we do not know how much longer... Alright, alright. I didn't say it was impossible. I said it was impossible for the Enterprise. We need a smaller boat. Biggs, Wedge, it's time we gave that new toy of yours a proper field test. Hee <laughs> hee. It's probably best if I let the lad show you. Come on, the manufactory's not far. The manufactory. <laughs> they just look at each other. Like, oh, well. <laughs> oh my goodness, right behind us. Of course. Of course! Oh my gosh. A little project's just inside. Oh, you're going to like this one. Kinda excited. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Feast your eyes upon our latest and greatest feat of engineering. We call it a mana cutter. No, that's After you put down crazy. Gaius, Wedge and me struck out on our own for a bit and started work on the successor to the tiny Bronco. Impressive little thing, isn't she? My talent for ship design has plainly rubbed off on them. They've adapted the principles of corrupted crystal technology and constructed a mechanism which converts ether from its surroundings into elemental wind. Said wind is then harnessed by the specially engineered sails, providing the craft with propulsion and lift. All in all, a most elegant solution. I'm actually a little upset that I didn't think of it myself. 
The design does, however, come with one small flaw. What? The energy conversion ratio is bloody awful. To generate enough power to get you off the ground, you need to be in an area awash with predominantly wind-aspected ether. In other words, there are a few places you can fly, and lots of places you can't. The new Ishgardian airship hasn't left the boys much time for tinkering, meaning it may be a while before this particular project takes off, if you'll forgive the pun. What's happened? I've been looking all over for you. There's been word from Alda. It's about her grace, the Sultana. It seems you're required elsewhere. Leave the mana cutter with us. We'll see that she's airworthy and suitably equipped to slice through those winds. You, meanwhile, should concentrate on providing Raoban and the Sultana whatever help they need. Is this studio really gonna wait that long? I don't know about all this. We left the dragon killer, like, right outside the dragon's lair. It just seems like he might do something drastic. Raoban. General Raban says they may have uncovered the Sultana's whereabouts, and he wants you, by which I mean both of you, to go to the Waking Sands right away and help with the investigation. Come there. Pressing through Ishgard's plight may be. <laughs> Our presence here will not serve to hasten the Mana Cutter's completion. Let us return to the troubled land of Fennel and lend what aid we may. Tataru, have our friends at the congregation send a message to Astinian. Tell him we have identified a solution to our problem, but that it will take some time to prepare. As you wish, Master Alphanod. Okay, well, at least he thought to tell him. To the waking sands, warrior of light. Tis past time Uldar was delivered from this darkness. So fancy. Fancy words. I still have some of these... Thingies here. Thank you for coming. No thanks are necessary, General. I trust your recuperation continues apace. I cannot complain. Thanks to Higiri and her ministrations, I've regained much of the strength I lost during my imprisonment. Now he has one of these cool cloaks. I always thought they were really neat in anime. I gather you have made progress in the search for her grace. Aye, some good fortune at last. A few days past, Dulala informed us that a sizable shipment of alchemical supplies had been delivered to the palace. With Papa Shan's assistance, I set out to ascertain the source and nature of the shipment. My inquiries led me to Frondale's frontistry. Frondale's front history? <laughs> it's just a fun name. There, I learned that an order had been placed for a curious substance designed to sustain patients trapped in death-like slumber. An invention of the former head alchemist, apparently. A death-like slumber? This cannot be a coincidence. It lends some weight to Dulala's claims, aye. Her grace is likely somewhere within the palace, a bed but alive. Before making any attempt to extricate the Sultana, however, it seemed prudent to learn what manner of substance was used to induce her torpor. To that end, I made inquiries as to the whereabouts of the one most like to have administered it. The lady in waiting, Meriel. We sent for you as soon as we learned of her location. All that remains is to apprehend the woman. We shall dun, find dun, dun. our cat's paw in the silver bazaar. Cat's paw. 
But we must tread carefully. The market is not the bustling place it once was, and someone is sure to mark our coming. Should they inform the monetarists, we'll have a fight on our hands. True, she needs true love's kiss. To we must be her. prepared for the worst, and being short an arm, I thought Ugh. it wise to take another in its stead. What say you, warrior of light? Will you lend me yours? He wants to take my arm? <laughs> uh. Then I pity the bastard that stands in our way. Come, my friend. For Nanamo and for Ulda! Yeah. God. <laughs> my goodness. Well, I'm glad she's not dead. Hopefully. Unless this is all just false rumors. You never know. Could be a trap. Our target is Muriel, the Sultana's former lady in waiting, a woman of Midlander heritage. I am told that the two of you have met. Our sources indicate that she left the palace shortly after the incident and quietly rejoined the dwindling population of the Silver Bazaar. I suggest we begin by questioning the market's residents and confirm that Muriel is still hide in hiding there. Hi, she's here. Left the city for good, she says. Barely leaves her house, though. Who? Oh, it's the one closest to the market entrance. Ah. There she is. Oh, hello. You are Meriel, the Sultana's former lady-in-waiting? I know no one of that name. Pray excuse me. Her face. Eyeballs. <laughs> General Alden. Jig is up. Gotcha. We will have the name. truth from you, girl. <laughs> Mayhap it would be better coming from me. Lollarito, you'd best talk fast. All these potatoes are goats. Can't trust any of them. Like, I don't know. I left Tataru and uh, Wedge. Or Biggs. I think it's Wedge. <laughs> but I don't know anymore. Can't trust them. As you know, Telegi Adelegi's Cartano reclamation bill was no more than a facade. A means to get his grubby little hands on that elegant monstrosity, Omega. When he learned of Nanamo's intention to abdicate, however, he was forced to amend his plans. Suddenly, assassination seemed the most promising way to further his ambitions. I am told Teleji had discovered a maid in whose veins ran the blood of House Thorn. A new, more pliable puppet to sit the throne. Twould have caused an uproar, of course, but few could have contested her claim. Thus did I employ young Mariel here to administer a potent sleeping potion in place of a poison. Mm -hmm. 
You should know, General, that your dear friend Ilbert was fully aware of my plan. I had him lie about the assassination as a means to prime your rage against Teleji. We weren't entirely sure how you would react, but things went rather better than expected. You conniving little worm! You had your claws in the Crystal Braves before their first recruit had sworn to serve! But of course! When a new game begins, tis only prudent to have a piece on the board. Ilbert was mine. Truth be told, a significant proportion of the Braves' initial endowment was also mine. With such large sums moving about, t'was a rather trifling matter to disguise my own contribution. Ah, Ilbert. I secured his services with a promise to support his cause once my authority had been solidified. I swear, the man thinks of naught but prizing Alamigo from the grasp of the Empire. Unlike you, General, the poor fellow seems quite unable to forsake the land of his forefathers. Mayhap, that's why he called you a traitor to your people and a disgrace to your homeland, amongst other things. What was it he always compared you to? Uh, oh, yes, an overgrown lapdog begging for scraps at the Sultana's table. <laughs> oh, how we laughed. Uh, I think he should just smack a with his good hand. <laughs> Set him by it. Alas, Ilbert's <sighs> entertaining little outbursts eventually gave way to wearisome tirades, and the zealous brute became rather unruly. I had no wish to see you executed, you understand, but he would not take no for an answer. Rest assured, his employment with me has long since ended. Which brings us neatly to the present. What say you, General? Both you and the Sultana are alive. We have one corpse and one fugitive. And preparations have been made to restore your good name. Shall we cry quits and start again with a blank ledger? Hmm? The hells we will! Do you honestly expect me to forgive and forget? After all you've done, you're guilty of high treason! Stay your blade, Master Alden. You yourself are not innocent. Or have you forgotten your own crime in executing Teleggi Adeleggi without trial? Though you acted out of loyalty to the Sultana, such deeds are in violation of both the word and spirit of the law. If you would, Lord Lollarito? This potion will wake the Sultana from her slumber. Consider it a gesture of conciliation. You will find her grace resting comfortably within her private chambers. Should you doubt my word, I shall willingly accompany you to the palace as your hostage. I like not your motives, Lollarito. But you saved the Sultana's life, and for that, you have my gratitude. No! Don't trust him. Rauban Aldin. You are hereby reinstated as General of the Immortal Flames. 
the citizens of Uldar shall once more be united under Nanamo Unamo. And together we shall usher in a new age of prosperity. So I don't know about all this though. <laughs> they just run away. Politics. Yeah, it was a little too easy, eh? It's like, yeah, well, here's what really happened, and sure, you can have your job back. We'll wake up this whole time, and everything's good. Sure, it is. By the 12, I feared Lord Lolorito's arrival would herald another bloodbath. Little did I suspect that he, of all people, would gift us the means to rouse the Sultana. You and me both, buddy. Bartholomew. Good man. Same General Rama had mentioned you might be coming. Please, this way if you will. Please. Thank you. like a little dolly. It worked. Uh huh. I was having the longest dream. Tis time to wake up, Your Grace. Another day begins in Thanalan, and the sun blazes bright upon the sands. Aww, so cute. I'm glad she's not dead. <gasps> That's what I was thinking they were going to do. I really, really thought we were going to just kill her. <laughs> He's already had enough trauma to deal with. Leave him alone a little bit. Her grace is awoken. The palace physician assures me she is none the worse for her slumber. Dad. <laughs> I believe her grace will soon resume her plans to place the government of Ulda into the hands of its citizens. Whatever path she chooses to take, I shall walk it with her. And we shall tread slowly, lest the nation be unsettled in our wake. Her Grace's compassion is a shining beacon to us all. But what our city truly thrives upon is competition. It is in the struggle against our rivals that opportunities are seized and fortunes made. 
And with the Empire on the offensive once more, now would hardly seem the time to turn our system of government upon its head. Are you privy to new intelligence, my lord? I would hardly call it new. Remind me, what was the name of that enormous Imperial warship which met its end in Mordona? Oh, wait, I have it. The Agrius. Yes, well, it would appear that the Galeans have been hard at work on another such vessel. How close are they to completing this ship? Is it operational? Its maiden flight was a success, I hear. I should imagine Emperor Varys is eager to see how it performs in battle. Oh, these Garleans. Between these, like, can't we just send them to war against, like, the Ishgardians? Because they both like to fight so much. I don't know. <laughs> My lords and ladies, I move that it is time to repair the damage caused by Telegi Adelegi and prepare our great nation to repel the Empire once more. Ugh. Man, it just doesn't end. Tis well that the Sultana has awoken. The Syndicate yet needs to put its house in order, but twould seem the worst of the confusion has passed. Uldar has taken control of its future. And I must do the same. I have decided to disband the Crystal Braves. They weren't already disbanded? Like, I was under the assumption that they weren't a big anymore. Among the recruits, there were those who supported our Order's goals and convictions with all sincerity. It is my hope that these loyal men and women will choose to remain our allies in the battles to come. As for those who sided with the traitor, Ilbird, they shall be hunted down and held to account for their crimes. It is my earnest hope that they will surrender themselves peaceably when the time comes, though I think it unlikely. Ah, my all-conquering crystal braves. The model army meant to pave the way for a single, unified, grand company of Eorzea. That so high an ideal should be brought so low. That's what happens when you let your ego get the best of you. I need not tell you how deeply the betrayal stung me. Yet I see now that it was mine own naivety and pride which allowed the Braves to fall prey to corruption. As ever, it is to your own shining example that I turn for inspiration. Like you, I mean to stand firm in the face of hardship and give mine all for the cause. Let us resume the search for our missing comrades, that we might come together to shine the light of dawn across the realm once more. The role of Crystal Brave Commander suited me ill, and I shall play it no longer. Henceforth, I shall be no more or less than Alfino, proud member of the Scions. Oh, I know character growth and development. Always like that. I blush to speak thus of my inner turmoil, but the fact that remains, there is no woman alive in whom I would rather confide. Were it not for your shining example, I might never have emerged from beneath the pall of my despair. Aww. Sorry, Alfie, you're just gonna have to get behind Harushafant. He's my number one fan, I think. Hmm. Still no wonder from Esther Garland. I hope this meta cutter of theirs is nearing completion. I am assured that her grace will make a full recovery. Aye, and Ulda too shall flourish once more. General Robin and his colleagues have matters well in hand, I believe. 
Lady Yukiri, a question if I may. I believe your people have been keeping a close watch on the Crystal Braves, but you know how things stand at the Rising Stones. Ah, yes, of course. You'll be pleased to know that the third unit Braves abandoned Revenant's toll when they learned of Captain Ilbert's defeat. The only blue uniforms to be seen there now are those worn by soldiers loyal to you, Master Alphanon. To me, I see. I am grateful to hear that at least some of our members were true to their oaths. Ere we return to Ishgard, I must go to the Rising Stones and thank these stalwarts for their service. It shall be my final act as Crystal Brave Commander. Will you join me, Burr? You were there at the company's inception. Tis only fitting that you be present at its end. And I would appreciate the support. Aww. Got your back, Holby. Go for a little emotional support. It's like my second uh, nature. Just always there to be the support. Oh, phew. They're not really wearing blue uniforms, are they? C commander you're alive! And Burr, too. I knew you'd scrape through. My splendid crystal braves, I have wronged you. All of you. My promises of glory and salvation have brought you naught but blood and betrayal. Bah. You'll not hear us complaining. T'was a sight messier than expected, I, but we were still fighting for the freedom of all, just like we swore. Ain't that right, mates? Hi! <laughs> oh. You humble me. I am truly blessed to have such steadfast comrades. It is with the most profound regret then that I must. That's enough of that, Commander. We know what you have a mind to say, and we ain't having none of it. We've talked it over, <laughs> see, and we're all agreed. You can take our uniforms and strip us of our ranks, but we won't be no less of a company. But the Crystal Braves... The Crystal Braves may be finished, but the ideals upon which the company was founded live on. They bind us to each other, and to you. Commander, Alphanode, our minds are made up, so you may as well get used to it. Let us help the Scions. Let us help you find Minfilia and the others. <laughs> My friends, after all that has happened, I know not what to say. Oh. <laughs> it must be that, Thumbs. Oh, they love him. That's sweet. I was wondering when I heard that they were still a thing. Sniff, pray excuse me. I had thought my tears spent. My grandfather used to say that one could measure a man by the constancy of his comrades. Mayhap I am the exception, which proves the rule. Nay, do not protest. I know that I am not worthy of their loyalty, bro. But as Thaliak is, is my witness, I shall do everything in my power to earn it. Oh. You have friends. I must speak of future plans with the remaining Braves. Any information we uncover on the missing Scions will need to be shared with our allies across the realm, specifically Yuri Anshe in the Waking Sands and Tataru in Ishgard. While we are organizing our various channels of communication, I would ask what you call, that you call, my Master Garland at the Manufactory. I will join you in Ishgard as soon as I am able. Let's go see uh, if they've got this thing ready to go. That's kind of exciting. I am curious about this thing. Let's go, let's go, Sid, let's go. Looks like an interesting character. Burr, how in the seven hells do you do it? I was just about to send for you. We have but this moment completed the Mana Cutter's first successful test flight. 
A few minor adjustments, she'll be ready to go. While we see to the finishing touches, you might want to play, pay a visit to Fortop Manor. A dragoon by the name of Astidian was looking for you. Ah, good old Astidian. <laughs> You have fulfilled your obligations to the old odds, then. Mistress Tataru has been keeping me appra apprised of the situation. Once I learned that these mana cutters of Master Garland's were nearing completion, I saw no reason to tarry in the mists. For the present, Needhog seems content to remain in the airy, plotting his revenge. Might not this be an apt moment to unfold our plans, Sister Emmerich? I think we have kept him in the dark long enough. Sir Emmerich... He maybe. <laughs> oh my gosh, a city! It is huge. All stands ready, Lord Commander. Ah, the moment has come then. Pray excuse my lateness. I paid a brief visit to the workshop to inquire about the mana cutters. The engineers assure me that they're ready. The airy is now but a short flight away. Yet what a long and winding path we took to reach this point. Master Alphano's proposal, Less than I we thought. never would have attempted to parlay with the dragons. Though our negotiations yielded little, our expedition with Lady Isa taught us much. You took an unimaginable risk. I could scarce believe the tale Astinian told. <laughs> Aye. Tis true that many of our countrymen would sooner die than join hands with the heretic's mistress. But twas through that most unlikely of alliances that we came to speak with Reisvelger. A conversation that went rather poorly, as I recall. Uh, she tried. She tried her hardest. <laughs> In this instance, the journey was more important than the destination. Had we not slain Nidhogg's consort, Tiamun, and put the Great Worm on his guard, the Dravanians would have arrived at Ishgard's walls long ago. Aye, that they would. Full grateful am I for every hour of respite your actions have afforded us. Thanks to you, our defenses are much improved. Tis but a pity they won't be enough. Thus, you believe an assault upon the area represents the city's best chance of survival. Is that not so, Astinian? I am under no illusions. Nidhogg's might is legendary. But with his eye in my possession, I can stifle his strength at the source. Victory will be hard won, even so. And I shall be glad indeed to have the Warrior of Light at my side. He really likes to pull that thing out and show it off. <laughs> like, he just comes, just randomly. He's like, oh yeah, remember this thing? <laughs> you shall have my blade as well. There are more of these mana cutters to be had, yes? Oh. Lord Commander, no! He's gonna join us. How can I, a proud knight of Ishgard, stand by and do naught while an outsider risks life and limb for our homeland? I swore an oath to protect this city. Pray leave the slaying of dragons to dragoons, Sir Knight. Your duty to command the city's defense is no less vital. Oh, man. Should we fail and Nidhogg <laughs> slip through our grasp, who then will hold the walls against him? Will you leave Ishgard in the hands of the Holy Sea zealots? There are others. Who but you has the authority and the standing to orchestrate a city-wide defense? I do not, and neither does the Warrior of Light. That is why it is our place to fight, and yours to remain here, Lord Commander. I mean, he has a point. Like, half the people don't even know who I am, so... What? You too, Master Alfino. <laughs> By the fury. You have shown some promise, but this adversary is far beyond your skills. <laughs> oh. He's so short. Your candor is appreciated, Sir Dragoon. I shall remain then and cheer you from afar. 
Well, my friend, <laughs> it would seem I have discouraged the last of the volunteers and claimed the task as ours alone. But if any alive can best this worm, tis surely we too. Well, I guess not. She had to think about it. She's like, are you sure? Do I really want to go hang out with this guy? <laughs> Alone. Be the butt of all his insults. I pricked Master Alphanon's pride, I fear, but I had been, had I been less forceful, the boy would have insisted on accompanying us to the airy. Do not think me blind to his talent. With a few more campaigns under his belt, I have no doubt that Alphanon will make a fine field commander. But one does not practice on an adversary such as Nidog. We shall be hard pressed enough without the added worry of carrying an office. It's true. It's true. I mean, we're fighting like this master dragon, you know, so. We have tarried long enough. Let us call upon Master Garland to take possession of the Vanna Feathers. See, hello, Burr, old friend. The cutters are ready when you are. The finer adjustments cost us a few sleepless nights, but we got there in the end. Which means you can get where you need to go. I tell you, these little beauties will tear the, through the wind like <laughs> wind barrier, like a servant drill through cottage cheese. Ew! <laughs> and that, my friends, is a garland ironworks guarantee. You have our thanks. Come, warrior of light. The dead worm awaits. The dead worm. So cool looking. It's scary, but cool. <laughs> Hey all, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. If you liked this video, please like this video because that'll help gather more folks to the video of the channel. We are aiming for 1k, so we're almost there. Also, if you are new and you haven't yet, please subscribe. Uh, we have a Discord link that is very very fun that link will be in the description underneath this video and i also have all my other social media links and stuff that will be under there as well and also i do have a patreon if you're interested that link is below and that does help <laughs> get us uh to support the channel so i can be here and do more stuff with you guys all right from uh all of us to all of you Bye.